pre-recorded like time to administer. And it was something like about a half an hour per farm per day to run the, the Avelison. The, the Tulison 100 was, was more than that. So, uh, we had a metric and I'll just not to throw Tulison under the bus, right? Cause I would be assumed with any of the injectables. Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. I'm the host of the podcast. And joining me in our podcast studios this week is Dr. Brent Sexton. Dr. Sexton is an associate veterinarian with Suaday Health and Production. Dr. Brent, thanks for coming on the show. Um, multiple times now on the show, and we appreciate you coming back on. Just in case somebody didn't catch that first episode, Brent, why don't you introduce yourself? Yep. My name is Brent Sexton. I'm a 2018 graduate from Iowa State. Uh, veterinarian with Suaday here for the last few months. And prior to that, spent the last uh, four years at the mash offs and had a great time there and having a great time here now. Brent, we uh, recorded a podcast with uh, Nick Lauterbach here uh, recently, and Nick talked about the relationship between a tech services veterinarian and, and a customer, a veterinarian who's working with a producer, either through a vet clinic or a production system. And he said uh, that you and he had a, a good working relationship and you had collaborated on a case that he really thought was a good kind of example of a productive working relationship there of um, you as a practicing veterinarian leveraging your resources, connecting with allied industry and bringing their expertise in to solving a problem. Um, we didn't get into the details uh, Nick, uh, with Nick on what the case was. And uh, I, much like our audience, I'm sure is very excited to hear what was going on. What was what was up with the pigs and how would you guys collaborate? And ultimately, what'd you make better? Absolutely. Yeah, it was it was a great collaboration and uh, really appreciate Nick's help uh, in the support of Farm Gay and Verbach. So the the general premise was I had a mycoplasma positive stable sow farm. Uh, it was two sow farms, kind of sister sites with a shared GDU uh, that then broke with PERS. And PERS has not gotten easier to eradicate. Um you know, over the last several years. And so we were in the position where, uh, boy, we're coming up to the end of our myco closure and coming up to the end of the PERS closure, we really wanted to avoid extra stress, uh, a potential like mass needle event that would, you know, s spread PERS around kind of at the final hour. Uh, so thinking, boy, how can we, how can we leverage other, you know, medication routes of administration uh different interventions and was meeting with nick and it just kind of came up as you know what do you think of using avison for a a micro closure you know and and kind of explained why we'd go that route uh and that they farmgate was very supportive uh verback so it's a uh, Farmgate would market Verbac, some of their injectable products through the animal market, uh, animal health side for large animals. So, uh, you know, it's like we've got the products. Let's work together. And so the the general premise here was, uh, like I said, it was a con uh, conjunctive or a, a dual closure, and we we used. Uh, this was done while I was at the mash house, and so general protocol was two. Uh, macrolide shots, you know, telathromycin and done four weeks apart right at the end. And so we replaced that initial shot with an Avelison pulse and then used the, the Verbac uh, Tulison 100 for our second shot. And, and that allowed us basically to push back that needle event four weeks. And, uh, you know, so if you look at the, this was presented at Layman, uh, we had a poster there. And so if you, if the listener happened to see that poster or, or finds it, looks at whatever, and certainly would encourage them to, uh, you know, probably the biggest thing is this is very much a real life case. This wasn't a research study. Uh, this was done to, Hey, we think this is a good opportunity. Let's, let's show people that, you know, it's a, it's a case report. It, uh, there's no P value here. Um, 
And so the idea was, let's write it up, share this information. But uh, it was just, it, it worked well because, you know, our, our purse closure pushed back our MICA closure. So you might look and say, boy, why are they giving their waiting till 41 weeks post closure? Well, that, that's because of purse. We were waiting to, to test out a purse. So that's, that's the general premise and how we approached it. Ultimately, um, came out as a successful closure. We did testing kind of during the medication uh, a couple different time points and then 90 to 120 days after guilt entry, we came back and tested guilts uh, and they were all negative. So we feel really confident we had a successful mycoplasma closure and purse closure. And, you know, some of the, the ancillary benefits too, we recorded like time to administer and it was something like about a half an hour per farm per day to run the, the Avelson. The, the Tulison 100 was, was more than that. So uh, we had a metric and I'll just not to throw Tulison under the bus, right? Because that would be assumed with any of the injectables. Um, you know, it was almost a like a three hour per 1000 sows labor metric. Um, so on a large farm, that, that's a substantial amount of labor. And it was, it was easy. It went smoothly. You just kind of made sure you didn't run out. And it really ended up being a a fairly straightforward project. Uh, obviously, like I said, it's not a research project. I don't have great statistics and things like that to share, but it's it's two farms that we had, you know, a really beneficial story to tell on. A full value relationship starts with understanding your business. And Alanco knows growing the healthiest pig requires focus on every segment of production. Through continuous innovation, trusted solutions, and actionable insights, Alanco is invested in helping you achieve the full value of every decision. Their portfolio offers solutions that manage disease challenges, minimize variation, and mitigate mortality to optimize pig health. Get full value from start to finish with Alanco. How many days did you administer uh, the Avelison? Um, it's water medication. We typically think of that as not a one-day event, but how many days? Correct. The Avelison was was basically run at label for five days. Okay. And then um, uh, what about the practical part of administering that in a sow farm? Like everybody out there in a wean to finish barn or even in the GDU would be like, yep, I know how to set up the water medicator and do that. But sow farm, we don't uh, a lot of times have that luxury of a ready-to-go water medication system. Yeah, that was certainly a, a fortunate aspect of of this farm system that that we were able to do that and certainly aware that not every farm can you know uh you run into weird things of oh the medicator you can do it but you're going to medicate the showers yeah well, well, maybe we don't want to do that then yeah. <laughs> you know or uh you know all the different kind of things it can the be cool so, cells don't need avelison that's correct <laughs> you know um so it's one of those things like this is, yeah, this probably doesn't fit every farm every time, but for us, you know, I think the, the creative thought here or the, the idea of there was not a lot of documentation using water meds, uh, in my closures and especially kind of with this route of, of a biosecurity or not really biosecurity, but, uh, disease elimination kind of mindset of, of leveraging different, uh, intervention opportunities to to avoid those potential shortcomings with spreading purrs around so that was kind of the the impetus yeah. behind it as well well i think that's another area um where if if your farm is not set up for water medication if you've got a sow farm and you think this is interesting it's not set up for water medication you don't need to solve all those problems on your own. You know, use your Nick Lauterbach in that situation. Who, whoever's got that product that's going to be a solution, they've probably worked with somebody who had a similar administration challenge. And they're going to be some of your best resources for a practical solution. Water medication on a sow farm is an excellent example. Every sow farm could do it. It's just they're not set up today to do it. Um, so I think, you know, it's another good example of use your resources. That's a free resource that's available to you. Call them, text them, email them, whatever. Yeah, yeah. the the technical service veterinarians have an opportunity to be a really great resource uh, for veterinarians. It, you know, if we choose to use them, uh, they they have access to a lot of different systems or clinics uh, 
farms and such. And so they, they probably have seen or had these discussions with a lot of people. And so it's kind of a one, it's an outside set of eyes, but it's an outside set of eyes that has a, a very wide breadth of, of industry knowledge or, or access. And so it's great to have someone you can, you know, bounce some ideas off of that, that maybe sees things a little differently from you so that this, this idea, or I have it, the preconceived notion of why I can't do something and they might have a solution to it. All I got to do is ask. What did uh, the Farmgate team and or Nick personally do that really, um, you know, stood out in terms of their customer service and helping you out? Why, why ultimately were you comfortable coming to them and saying, I got a problem, I need some help um, and trusting them to be involved in the problem solving for your business? Yeah, both uh, the Farmgate and Verback teams were, were really great to work with, very supportive, uh, and, and they really kind of put in my court of, you know, what do you need? And so they were, they were great with helping us organize product and uh, setting up the the testing. You know, what do we think will be the, you know, like I said, it's not a research project, but we still wanted, we were still doing the testing, you know, beyond what I would normally do for a closure uh, because we want, we knew we wanted to present this. And so they were great helping identify resources of, hey, what kind of interval would be, would be, you know, a little bit more substantive or hold up to a little bit more rigor, things like that. So really just kind of going beyond the normal nuts and bolts of the micro closure that I work with um, to, and bringing those resources to me. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. Excellent. Brent, you know, you and I first met um, an embarrassingly long time ago for me at the Mashoffs. Um, you were an intern there. Uh, you worked with uh, Elise Schleter at that point, if I remember right, now Two Hill. Um, and I was a veterinarian at Mashoffs at that point. Um, you know, we're both uh, Mashoffs alums. And I, I kind of want to leave the audience here with a quote that I will never forget from Wayne Mashoff. Um, and that quote is two heads are better than one, even if one is a head of cabbage. And um, he obviously would say that in jest, but there's truth to it, right? Um, bringing in outside perspective is some of the cheapest learning that you can ever have. And especially if that's a consultant, um, you know, a tech services veterinarian, it doesn't cost you anything, leverage that information. You never know what sort of nuggets might turn up and what you can apply to help make your problems better. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Very good. Well, thanks, uh, Brent, for coming on the podcast again. Really appreciate you sharing this information. And to our audience, thanks for listening to the Swine Health Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinehealthblackbelt.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast so that you don't miss out on our next episode. For Dr. Brent Sexton, I'm Clayton Johnson. Thanks for joining us. Have a great rest of your week. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at W-I-S-E-N-E-T-I-X dot com. <laughs>